Hi, I'm Mark Frazier. Exploring wildlife right in our own backyard is the best way to learn to appreciate them and therefore protect them. You're invited to join me on the exciting wildlife adventures. Welcome to Nature World. Found right in our backyards in the northeastern United States is a large carnivore that's poorly understood. So I assembled a team and we went out to solve the mystery of the koi wolf. It started with asking the public if they've seen the animals in the so local area. Naturewalkswithmark.org. Okay. Have you seen any any coyotes? Yeah, I saw one about two days ago. Really? It crossed Curve Street. No, okay, it, but I haven't seen as many as I normally see. If you do, here's my card. If if you ever if you if you think you know a spot where they might be around, because I want to do a film on them, I'm trying to introduce people to the species. So if you happen to see them, by all means, give me a call. But, um, I came out of one of the trails into the meadow at Great Brook, and I heard him snarl real nastily. You know, and I thought, oh God, he's getting into a fight. <laughs> 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 Stopped and turned around, and a coyote came flying out. <laughs> oh, really? He yeah. Came out with his tail wagging. Fairly bold, but they, you know, they have a lot of fur, so that they people say, oh, they're 80, 90 pounds, but when they weigh them and they they check them, they're actually oh, 50. He is. Yeah, right, right, exactly. He goes so. about 50 pounds. Yeah, yeah. But he's getting on a bit now. But. Yeah, yeah. The information from the public was extremely helpful. Although we were only able to find this single red fox, so I decided to enlist the help of a scientist, a biologist named Dr. Jonathan Way, who's actually studying the koi wolf, and who's published papers to show the genetics are actually a hybrid between the eastern wolf and the western coyote. Thanks to the use of radio collars, Dr. Way is able to perform vital scientific research on the species. Incredibly, instead of conservation land, the signal took us right into the backyards of these Massachusetts homes. Using a night vision telescope, Dr. Way is able to safely observe the species without ever disturbing them. Scientific research about the living animal's habits are vital. Remember, this isn't a western coyote, this is a koi wolf. Dr. Way is spearheading the research, allowing us to see into the secret world of this incredible species. We quietly observed through the entire night, noting any prey items that the animals found. When the sun came up the following morning, we were able to get a look at the habitat. It was incredible to me to think that these animals are sleeping right in our own backyards. Amazing. They've adapted to live among us and we need to learn to do the same, to adapt to live among them. As we continued our search, a big flock of turkeys ran right across the road in front of us. Turkeys are a true conservation success story. There was a time where you could not find a turkey on the East Coast, and now as you can see, their populations are doing very well. Turkeys fill a vital niche by eating ticks, which is important to keep Lyme disease at bay. Not far away, we hit the jackpot and find this incredible family of koi wolves. That was Eb. Here's the male male. This is a collared male. He's probably upwards of almost 50 pounds. Here's the uncollared. This is the guy that was at the uh, carcass last night. Remember the, uh, he was, that was a distinctive one that we saw very frequently. Here comes a fourth. This is phenomenal. That, um, another lighter colored one. Here, here's a fifth. This is absolutely amazing. This fifth one looks just like the fourth. Okay, there, there are to the left, too. Oh, uh, six. Right? Yeah. Okay, now pan to the right. Go to the right. I couldn't believe our incredible luck, and we started to look around at the habitat itself. As we hiked along looking for paw prints, Dr. Way explained, the smallest of the koi wolves is as big as the largest of the coyotes. The small um, 
Eastern Coyote or Koi Wolf track, which is uh, from a small animal that made it. She's in the 28 pound range. I know that because I collared it and put a radio, c captured and put a radio collar on her. She's um, very small in the small range of this animal that we currently call Eastern Coyotes or Koi Wolves. Uh, a bordering the size of a large western coyote. Looking in places where the koi wolves lived, I was amazed to see things like this massive buck. Wildlife seemed to be thriving. So why do koi wolves and coyotes seem to have such a bad public image? Well, it has to do with education. Things like leaving your pet cat out all night cause a problem for your pet and the wildlife. What are some of the common misconceptions about koi wolves? There's two very common misconceptions conceptions about um, koi wolves, coyotes, and wolves for that matter. Um, number one is their danger level or, or lack thereof, and number two how many there are or lack thereof. Uh, number one, their, their danger level. Mo most people are uh, concerned about having them around or, or don't like having them around because number one they possibly kill our pets if we leave our cats outside, and number two um, they are potentially dangerous to us, dangerous to our kids. And when you look at the actual numbers, it's almost laughable. On average, every year in the United States, when you combine western coyotes and the eastern coyote or koi wolf, you have um, a handful of, of coyote-caused bites, five to ten, in all of the United States. And they make national headline news. That's in all of the United States. There's been two coyote-caused fatalities in the past 500 years. Meanwhile, domestic dogs cause a thousand people every day to go to the emergency room in just the United States, a thousand people every day, and 15 to 20 people are killed by dogs every year. So while a handful of people are bit by coyotes and two have been killed by coyotes in all of recorded history in North America, um, 15 to 20 people every year die from dog attacks on average. So the lack of danger from them is, is staggering when you look at the numbers. I mean, for instance, if you hear them howling in your backyard and you live in a conservation area and you're afraid to go into that conservation area because you hear them howling at night, which is common from a lot of people, your danger of um, getting in a car crash, driving to that area, having a heart attack, struck by lightning, stung by bees and killed, are astronomically higher than even getting attacked by an eastern coyote or koi wolf. Um, the second misconception about these animals is how many there actually are. Um, and we'll get into the ecology soon of these animals. They, they travel tremendous distances on a nightly basis and, and through radio collars you can determine that and you can actually find that out very easily. And so they have large territories and live at low densities. It's not unreasonable for a, a pack of three to four adults in the wintertime to travel 10 to 15 miles a night. So when you combine the three or four adults times 10 or 15 miles a night, that's roughly 50 miles of tracks one pack can leave in one territory. So it literally seems like they're everywhere, like they're omnipresent. When in reality, they live at low densities. A number here on Cape Cod for resident territorial animals would probably be less than one per square mile. And when you have 20 to 25 deer per square mile, you're at a, a pretty good density in, in most areas where they're not even over abundant, deer are. And when you have eastern coyotes or koi wolves, you have well under one per square mile in an average place. And so the mis misperception that they're everywhere, that they're going to increase beyond control, which is false also because they're territorial animals that prevent others from coming into their territories, and then their lack of danger. Those are probably the two biggest misconceptions. One, danger to people. Two, the ecology of the animal itself. The koi wolf is as misunderstood as it is beautiful. We need to learn all we can about this mysterious carnivore. The incredible thing about wildlife is the closer you look, the more you find. Thank you so much for joining me on this nature walk. I'm Mark Frazier and I'll see you again very soon.